being taught facts and that and, 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 and in science as well and that isn't really got across the idea that there are no such things as facts we've pieced together the most likely hypothesis especially in science like kids are taught facts and science it's like there are no facts in science it's the most likely hypothesis and we talk about things that can be falsified or not and I think that this especially in his and, and then when this comes into history you know we're you, you know, I was very aware at school that I was so at school in Britain, especially learning about the Second World War, and um, and you know, it's it's that that there were a lot of things in the language which isn't on purpose, but it's it's very uh, well, and more in the Cold War actually. You know, like the the bias is very implicit; it's not explicit, and so people don't see it for what it is, and people uh, talk. And, and people are in school thinking that they're learning what happened, they're not realising that it is their country's version of what happened, which isn't necessarily wrong, it's just that, that it's, not, it's not that they're being lied to, it's that, you know, this, there's I always... Would suggest it is. No, 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 no I'm, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it is sometimes, but, you know, in general, it's History not necessarily... History is always that. written by the victors. Of course, as Napoleon said. Uh, I'm going to pick Alex because I cut him off short last time. I don't know, I just uh, kind of saw a synergy between the previous question about inequality and about education. And I think the underlying uh, base for all these issues is how society is uh, pre presented or presented. In, in our case, we are represented by someone, and that creates that not, that's not only in the, like, in the political systems, but also in the co corporation systems. And obviously, all the decisions, what to study and how to evaluate work or effort, is pushed up, up to the scale, to top level. The courtesy of this kind of pyramidal structures, there's no feedback of what have to be done or any changes to be implemented and so on. That's why people take the top layers are defending their own values and their own systems. In education, obviously, it's so easy to decide what to study and there's no feedback what not to study. And that's why all this, we need to change structurally how society operates to be able to fix those issues as inequality. Education is another one, because even if someone wants to change something, there is no way to do so. We outsource our powers to the, some kind of a individuals, which they have totally different incentive scheme compared to our own. They don't understand what we want, or anybody, just structure, not that the people are bad. That's why bankers and everyone we claim that greedy bankers, they don't exist as greedy bankers. This is just a wrong structure which people are put in and they act like that. That's why I think we should address how structures how society operate and what structure it uses for itself. So your Kath. name? Kath. Kath. Um, I, I want to say about I mean, really in the UK context, about even from infant school, the model now with the national curriculum is exclusively academic. There's nothing else, it's all about academic success. And it's about zero sum games, so children are competing in the classroom from five years old. There's no notion of a community of inquiry, there's no possibility of the children finding out information together. It's all about competing Ooh, with one another. Yeah, there is a competition. Dan, you've been very patient. Oh, right, yeah. <coughs> it's my belief the, the education system deliberately teaches you only one form of proof. That's um, proof by authority, hard authority. You're conditioned when you have the school system to believe whatever you're told to do, simply because you're told to believe it by authority figure like the teacher and the teacher. I'm sorry, uh, okay, the argument for authority is the only argument form that you're taught at school. And there are two others. One is the argument of your senses as direct observation, and the other is the argument of your reason, systematic reasoning, but you're not taught either logic or uh, empirical science. What you're taught is to memorize, to believe whatever you're told to believe, mm -hmm. simply because you've been told to believe it by an authority figure. And the way to prove something is to find an authority figure who said it and quite them. So the argument of authority is that conditioned into believing we're not taught the other two. Joe, yeah, you've been very patient. Yeah, I mean that might probably really feeds into that on the level like this uh, whole culture of sitting uh, on the floor with a uh, kind of a usually white man in a suit towering over you and telling you what's right and wrong from the age of five or so feeds into our obedience every single day. We see someone in a uniform and we automatically do what they say without actually questioning whether the thing that they're saying is moral or not. So that's a huge issue. 
second issue I'd say is that we, we have a state curriculum, yet none of us really trusts the state. Um, I'm all for uh, universal education, but I believe it could be done on a more, uh, a more local level, more community basis, where if grants were given out to say to different communities to okay, teach the Sorry, I know that's totally. But that's, that's a great point. Um, sorry, you haven't spoken. Your name? Eloise. Eloise. Um, I was just going to talk about the framework that we were taught in and how um, it's very much about you were saying just facts given to us and we're supposed to just accept those facts. And then as we go through the education process, we learn about critical thinking. And I taught in Japan for six years and I realised there that everyone has opinions that they want to express, but they, they can't in that country because you're not really allowed to. And as you go through the education system, you go to university, you then start to critically think or realise that you're critically thinking. And we don't really teach people to critically think, even from a very young age, to analyse the information they're given to. Um, so it's just, it is the framework of the future. Mary and then Eddie. And Noel, I haven't forgotten. Mary, go on. Um, I don't think the education system uh, tells people um, anything about how the economy really works and I don't think the education system tells people uh, what decisions are made at what level of government, what the local authority does. So they don't tell them about they, that? They don't, te they don't tell you who's controlling things and at what level it's being controlled and what you can do to intervene. It, it isn't there anywhere in the curriculum that I remember. No. Eddie? I, I just <coughs> think it's uh, what I've learned is a, a, a simple point about the language, learning rather than education. And uh, from going to college when, in 82, the first time, it, it felt more something to do with learning. When I went back to college in 2002, it was definitely about education and about, about the commodification of that. And that's a huge difference. And, and the, the, the pro it, it's been turned into a product, a severe product. <coughs> Mm -hmm. uh, I've got Noel and then Dave. Me now? Um, yeah, on education, uh, there was a report a good few years ago now when Thatcher was Prime Minister that the, they were doing a new um, syllabus for history education and it was all about uh, the history of the people basically. And Thatcher got to see it. And she said, no, no, no. History is about kings and dates <laughs> and battles. Dave. And the oh. teachers yielded to her. Yeah. OK, I don't know much about education because I've only taught in a few dozen schools and I've only inspected about 40 schools as an Ofsted inspector. So when I read stuff in the newspapers, I think, no, it's not what I see. And when I hear some of you guys talk, I think you've got points up to a point. But first of all, the history curriculum isn't all about uh, facts and queens and kings. Whatever Thatcher said, when you close your door as a teacher, uh, you've got an awful lot of freedom. They try and take it away from you. But when I go into a school and I work as a support assistant in a classroom, I see a very different school to if I come in suited up. Like the gentleman said, I've not seen a lot of people wearing suits in uh, primary schools. You get yellow paint on your suit when you're an Ofsted inspector. <laughs> you don't come in twice dressed um, that way. So there are elements, I mean, formally, in key stage uh, two, you are taught to differentiate between fact and opinion. So everybody knows about education because they went to school. I think everybody generalises about education, and that was a generalisation, but I'll stick to it. Nearly everybody. Yeah. I'll, I'll link it to governmentality. What, what is, uh, it's about government and governing our minds. That's what government means. And what they do is they fabricate beliefs throughout the education system, and those beliefs come from the pockets of corporations. So what you, you have the corporations paying politicians, or actually growing politicians, to put in, in power, so they make curriculums to control the population. And what that does is breaks the togetherness, the, the unity, the peace, the human rights. It's, it seems that it, 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 it works, but it doesn't. That's why we are here. David. <clears throat> like most things, education is changing, and the basis of it at the moment is 
that we know that we don't know. That's the basis of, I would have thought, most education. <coughs> you know, you know, you've got to test it, you've got to try something out, you've got to think things for yourself. Judy? Yeah, I'd just like to pick up on Dave's point. Um, that you can look at education through the lens of it's dominated by corporations, and certainly we're seeing that more and more with the academy structure, where it's moving out of local control into academies. Um, we're sold this line that it's about free schools. Um, and it is a little bit about free schools. It is a little bit about devolving it to kind of parents led. And, and, it's a, and it's a lot towards the commodification of corporations. But there's always these two things going on, which I think Dave was saying, is that it's not all bad. It's like there also is a critical thinking. There also is a talking of, you know, the, 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 as much as those kings and queens, people do still learn about the suffragettes. And I think, it's, I think we have to um, keep that in mind, really, that life isn't quite as black and white. And, even if you go, I work in the, I work for government, and I work scrutinising education, and so, so while I can see this corporation, there is also this value of people coming together, uh, co-production, um, localisation, even if that is in a tension with the corporate takeover as well. The, the, there are these two dynamics, and these dynamics are not just happening here, like us as some kind of activist group against the big bad state. In the state, there are also mm. these two tensions going on. So mm. I just think we need to, to right. kind of recognise that really. I've got Roy, that gentleman, and then Arvin, and then I'll come back <laughs> over here.